Come on, so close! Guys, Elden Ring is amazing. It's so addicting. You know what? This game is actually terrible. No, wait. Wait. Yeah, no, I never want to play this again. Kidding! I'm just pulling your legs. Elden Ring is one of the greatest video games I have ever played. Hands down, not up. Hey, I killed those birds, baby. I'm the best. I'm the best there ever was. Are you sure about that? Look at this fucking shot. <laughs> what? It's a boss? It's a boss? What are you- what? I find it interesting that whenever my friends ask me, Yo, should I play Elden Ring? Is it worth it? I've heard it's kind of difficult. That's a little intimidating. My answer is always- yes, God damn it! If some people had asked me the same about Demon Souls or Dark Souls, my answer might have been different. But Elden Ring? Yeah. I'll recommend that to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, we are witnessing one of the rare occurrences in the game industry where a new title not only lives up to the hype, but exceeds it somehow. That's not to say Elden Ring is perfect, because the only perfect video game in my eyes is Star Wars Connect, but it gets as close to perfect as you possibly can. Most of my complaints with Elden Ring come down to personal preference. The hype isn't just real, it's beyond real. It's metaphysical at this point. If you're wondering why it's taken so long to make a commentary video on Elden Ring, it's because I have a new crippling addiction, uh, which is Elden Ring. It's corrupting my work ethic, and as soon as I'm done recording this video, I'm going to go play it again. Please send help, this is not a joke. Not only is it a great FromSoft title, but in an industry we're selling out to the latest trend, is the trend, Elden Ring stays true to the roots of its Erd tree. While everyone is praising how good of a video game Elden Ring is, I think it's equally important how it defies the trends of modern gaming. Would you be surprised though, if I were to tell you, Elden Ring is also from software's easiest game. Oh my god. Ah. All right, well, maybe that's a stretch. But you know what's not a stretch? Downloading and playing Dark Nemesis, the sponsor of today's video. Whenever I'm getting destroyed in Elden Ring, you know what I do? I take a break and pull up Dark Nemesis on my phone, and I enter the multiverse. Engage in thrilling battles. Play anytime, anywhere, any when, any planet. Enjoy an exciting PvP experience. Squad up with your friends and duke it out in 10v10 battles. Get immersed within the epic 3D visuals and use the weapon system to level up your spirit, wings, and companions. The spirits you get can be used as mounts or transformed into weapons, so you might have some tough decisions to make. My mount is a Liger, and on it, I channel my inner spirit of Napoleon Dynamite. Pedro, just listen to your heart. That's what I do. Amen. And you can download and try out Dark Nemesis today for free using the link in the description and the pinned comment. If you do, you're eligible for gift card giveaways and in-game rewards, so why not? What are you waiting for, chump? Go ahead and play Dark Nemesis today and conquer the multiverse. Thank you, Dark Nemesis, for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. What is modern gaming? You know, I throw that term around a lot, and I feel I should explain what I mean. It's basically like you could summarize modern gaming with the phrase scoreboard update. That's the best way to describe it. Modern video game releases by AAA developers have reached such an absurd level of incomplete. It's like, well, there's no scoreboard in the game, eh? Well, guess we gotta wait for the scoreboard patch. Like, imagine. Imagine how far one has to fall to reach that. So many classic awesome game franchises have become so eager to completely throw away their identity in chase of a quick buck. 
Sometimes developers completely forget why their games were good, and they keep making shitty ones. I'm not sure what goes on at From Software, but they've only gotten better at making games since 2009. That's a long ass streak, dude. They're not slaves to the will of EA or Activision. They get pretty good funding, apparently. I've never heard of From Software employees stealing breast milk. You know what I mean? Or exploiting children in an online gambling scheme. Valve, Gabe. Hmm. They've never published a disaster as broken as Cyberpunk. If ever there was a time for From Software to fail, it was with Elden Ring. Holy shit! Holy shit! <laughs> The Souls games, and yes, Bloodborne and Sekiro, I'm gonna call Souls games, it's just easier that way. But the Souls games have always been criticized for being too difficult. The story and game mechanics are too vague. It's not accessible to a larger audience. Cater to my needs, please. They've been criticized for being too challenging, you know? Give me baby easy mode, please. And yet, despite a good chunk of the internet demanding from software change their method of operation, uh, they haven't, and have continued their consistent legacy of success. Oh shit. Oh. Oh! What the fuck? What the fuck? What? So now the whole should Dark Souls and Elden Ring have an easy mode debates can finally die, right? Because clearly, this game is much more accessible. Have you seen the numbers? Elden Ring has obliterated the record for peak concurrent players on Steam and viewers on Twitch out of From Software's titles. And you have to ask, why is this game so successful? Well, it's not just a kick-ass marketing campaign. It's not just having George R.R. Martin's name associated with it. It's a genuinely good video game that has taken out a lot of the frustrating aspects that have turned away a general audience. I made a whole video on the subject of an easy mode and all the negative consequences that would have. For those in the back that missed the memo, difficult does not mean inaccessible. Is it difficult to shove a dildo in your ass? Probably. That doesn't mean you can't do it. Difficult does not mean it's inaccessible. That's maidenless talk. I am afraid. Our maidenless. I get bitches. Can play the role of maiden. Okay, all right, I'm down. And I'm so glad that From Software was actually able to cater to these people asking for an easy mode without listening to any of their terrible ideas. You see, Elden Ring is still insanely challenging in all the right ways. Easy. Oh! Whoa! Oh, I'm alive. I'm alive. Oh, mama. We can do this. Whoa! As many are discussing the difficulty of bosses like Margit the Fell and Star Scourge Radon, which, Jesus, talk about a couple of badass names to have. In some ways, Elden Ring is more difficult than previous titles, and in other ways, it's easier. But... You know, after 80 hours, the fact that I'm still finding crazy unique bosses is just, it's insane. The level of content that is in this game and so polished. software didn't make the dodge, roll, block, attack, gameplay loop easier. They just made it less frustrating. I triggered a boss fight without actually... This is really bizarre. I just triggered a boss fight without going into the boss room. Do you guys see this? Oh my god! It's attacking me through the fucking wall! What the fuck? Oh my god, he's gonna kill me! Elden Ring introduces four new gameplay mechanics that allow more opportunities for players to retaliate and be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. I think this is where we see some Bloodborne DNA in the mix. Jump attacks, summoning AI, posture breaking, and guard counters. Where you might have had to roll or block a sword swing in Dark Souls 1, in Elden Ring, some attacks can just be jumped over, leaving you a wide opportunity to come down swinging with a jump attack. 
which can then lead to posture breaking. It wasn't exclusive in Sekiro, but it was definitely more fleshed out. Basically, every enemy has a hidden bar to indicate when their posture will break, and they become susceptible to a riposte. And those are the moves that do the big, beefy damage. Charged heavy and jumping attacks build up this bar faster, and you can totally play around this if you want, and be more aggressive, but you can still play the classic conservative style of like, okay, one hit, backing off. One hit, backing off, and chip your enemies down. It's called options, baby. Then there's guard counters, which add some utility and offensive power to shields. Hit R2 after blocking an attack, and you hit back. Simple as that. Finally, there's summoning, which isn't entirely new, but how it's treated is. Instead of just relying on other people and the occasional AI summon for only specific bosses, now players can summon 50 different types of AI companions for almost every boss fight. I think the Evergales, Evergalls prevent you from summoning, which is cool. But otherwise, you can upgrade those spirit ashes and just send out like five golems to attack your foes. Yeah, fuck him up. Fuck that guy. And since your summons take some aggro, well, it gives you more chances to be aggressive and get some swings in. What From Software has accomplished is making a Souls game that gives players more options than ever before. Now, what's the one thing you hated most about dying to a boss? Was it losing your souls? Being humiliated, perhaps? Did you somehow die to pinwheel? You godless bastard? No. The most frustrating part of losing to a boss was having to run back to the motherfucker. It's what I like to call the loser's walk. And it's a path I tread many times. I swear to god, the reason the beta chaos is so hated in the community is because it's a cheap gimmick boss that can kill you right away, but if you die right away, you have to take five minutes to walk back to it. But this is where From Software shows their innovation. A great new idea are the statues of Marika. Respawn points in certain areas, typically next to bosses. They refill your Estus and everything, but only if you die. So they function differently than Sites of Grass. I can think of maybe three areas I've encountered where I actually had to run past an enemy before fighting the boss again. So if you get grafted by Godric, it's like, poof, you're right there. Get back up, champ. I can't tell you how impressive it is that this game doesn't rely on having you replay sections of levels, given how large it is. For what is essentially a Dark Souls 4, this is a perfect design choice. Notice I said design choice, because Dark Souls 2 was made fun of for having a bonfire that you could literally just see down the hall. Like, it was a joke. But the Statues of America basically are like, okay, we're making it convenient for you to fight the boss again. But this is kind of a personal preference thing, right? Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1 especially put emphasis on dangerous enemies the player would encounter before every attempt at a boss fight. I like how those games handled difficulty because it felt like the checkpoints were really checkpoints. It was an endurance run where you had to conserve your health. The challenge in Demon's Souls wasn't so much the boss fights, but rather what condition you were in when you got to them. You literally have to get poisoned before you fight Quaylog. Like, it's unavoidable. And then you've got Demon Souls who's like, Oh, you fucked up? Yeah, you did. Little bitch boy, you died to some skeletons, replay the whole level. Oh, what's that? Half your health bar's gone, and the game's more difficult. World tendency. So the gameplay loop that would often turn people away would kind of go like this. Die to a boss, try to get back, try not to die to the enemies on the way, fuck that up, lose your souls, and then get pissed. So I ask you this question. What is a fair punishment for death? in a Souls game, in any game. Because unless we're putting quarters in the arcade machines, the only thing a game can take from you is time, right? And your wallet if you're not a responsible human being. But Elden Ring is impressive because it doesn't even attempt to waste your time. Once you get through an area, you rarely have to go back through it again. Shortcuts cut down on travel time, levels have multiple routes to get to the objective, more sites of grace than bonfires, and yet the game is still very challenging. Ooh, baby. 
Oh! Get that shit out of here! From Software has basically taken the Demon Souls difficulty and modernized it because it emphasizes the gameplay as the challenge more so than it does punishing you for failure. Especially since Demon Souls was an homage to old school difficulty, the loser's walk was a way for older games to kind of pad out the runtime. What I respect so much about From Software is they found a way to yet again make the game easier but in ways people didn't expect. Without just tweaking numbers, without just giving you a separate option in the menus. And just as you can make the game easier or harder for yourself, you can also set parameters to make it more challenging. Personally, I don't like to summon allies for every boss. I like to try and feel it out and see if I can do it without summoning, and then if I can't, then I will. It's just, play it how you want. You can easily succeed in this game if you really want to cheese it. And here's a crazy crackpot idea. If you're stuck, pff, go somewhere else. I, like most players, followed the advice of that dickhead who called me maidenless, which is untrue. I get bitches on the daily. And I headed straight for Stormvale Castle, where I confronted Margit the Fell with a uh, club and scraps of armor. It didn't go well. And that was the game telling me, hey, Go explore this massive open world we spent like eight years developing. It's like, yeah, I could bash my head and try to beat Margit at soul level eight, but why do that when I can explore and get stronger and then come back with a better chance? The non-linearity basically gives you infinite time to prepare for those essential boss fights. And there are some trade-offs to Elden Ring's design. You might find yourself over-leveled in an area that no longer poses a threat, but even so, Elden Ring is the kind of game you still can't be too overconfident in. Whoa. Whoa, what the? What was that bullshit? You know, I've always found it strange that FromSoft games have been criticized for not having a quest log. Where is the map? How come I don't have a hundred markers and a checklist of chores to do on screen at all times? But that's the way Zelda has been, and nobody's fucking batted an eye at those games. It's the same thing, dude. Adventure games should just let you adventure through them. You know, you don't have a nav point or a compass that's pointing you in the go-to direction at all times. And I like that. The freedom to go to dangerous areas when you shouldn't is fun. To fight bosses out of order or discover huge labyrinths by complete accident. That's what an open world RPG adventure is all about. An Elden Ring in this regard is nothing less than a 10 out of 10. Even if certain bosses and enemies are reused more than a handful of times. And this open world doesn't make a game like Dark Souls 3 like, ew, no open world. No, it's, it's different strokes for different folks, right? In Dark Souls 3, the game starts off and it's like, okay, you have to beat Udex Gundir. You're not going anywhere until you do that. And Elden Ring's like, well, you can skip the tutorial. <laughs> I mean, why not? Fuck it. I think Elden Ring is a prime example of the power of iteration. You know, making a similar game to what has proven to be successful and refining, changing certain elements of it. If you do that long enough, eventually you plateau and your work just builds upon itself. Elden Ring is successful for almost the exact same reasons that Smash Bros Ultimate was successful. It's a combination of every good idea they've ever had before, built under the supervision of its original brainchild. If you have a winning formula, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Just keep rolling, baby. When I look at games like KOTOR 1 and 2, I think, thank god we have two of these. And then when I look at Paper Mario, I'm like, thank God we have two of these. I don't know how they keep fucking Paper Mario up, but they've done it three times in a row. In a world where game developers like DICE exist and think that their core audience is disposable and worthless, From Software, under the leadership of Miyazaki, has never strayed from this ideal. Give your fans what they want, Please your core audience and everything will fall into place, right? They're still iterating on the core mechanics from Demon Souls, a game that was largely considered niche until Dark Souls came along. Impressive set pieces, dynamic level design, pattern-based boss and enemy encounters. 
trial and error difficulty, crushing challenges, but numerous ways to overcome them. It's the same game. Yes, Elden Ring reuses some assets, animations, weapon types, blah blah blah, but it has never had a negative effect, if any, on my gameplay experience. This is coming from someone who put hundreds of hours into Dark Souls 3, the game most similar to Elden Ring. You've got the freedom of choice of where you go from Demon Souls, the connected world from Dark Souls 1. Probably the best mechanic Dark Souls 2 introduced, power stancing has returned to my surprise. Using two weapons at the same time unlocks a new moveset. We have the cool weapon skills and fluid combat of Dark Souls 3. There's larger groups of patrolling enemies like from Bloodborne and Sekiro. Stealth and jumping, though not as advanced as Sekiro, add a whole new layer to the Dark Souls formula, providing further options for player engagement. In fact, the Bloodborne mechanic of healing damage you take is a great ruin in the game. They literally just put that base mechanic in the game as an option. Granted, I just activated it after 80 hours, but still, it's there. Elden Ring is basically Cell from Dragon Ball Z. It's got a little bit of DNA from all of From Software's titles to create the perfect warrior, the perfect game. Well, one might say that we're brothers. What? <clears throat> I think what it boils down to is just how impressive from software's legacy is and how they continue to do that even amidst the crisis of modern gaming. This game shouldn't work. To have such a massive world with so much content and to keep that quality bar extremely high, it's just I don't know how it's feasible. I haven't beaten it yet, 85 hours in. It hasn't gotten old for me. It might be ballsy to say this, but I think Elden Ring might have perfected video game difficulty and defied the trends of modern gaming at the same time. Now, let us sit back and stare at this massive accomplishment. Nicely done, gentlemen. Your work here today has made the Chancellor a very heavy man. No, 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 Yeah. So thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like if you did, and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. Don't forget to check out Dark Nemesis, the sponsor of today's video. Alright everyone, that's all I got for today, this is The Act Man, signing out. Peace!